Hello, hello everyone. First live of the year. Welcome, welcome. Just usually give the system a few seconds just to see um, if people can hear me. Um, welcome, can you guys confirm that you can hear me? Because I don't know how the internet connection is and I don't know if uh, my earphones are working. I'm always paranoid about technology because I'm not very good at it. Yes, you can hear me, you can hear me well. Okay, so the internet is strong. Everything's good. Happy New Year, everyone. I've missed you guys. All right, all right. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you had great holidays. I received so many um, testimonials, uh, thank yous and success stories over the holidays. And I was really, really excited to see how well people are doing on the 60 day challenge that we're doing. By the way, when you get the 60 day challenge, you realize you can do it again and again. Most people get the majority of their success stories on the second round. It just depends how much ex um, resistance you have to, to your desires, to your intentions. And then as you get into the group energy and it flows through you, um, you'll, you'll get the more and more. I posted quite a few videos since I've gotten here on uh, January 3rd, I believe. I've posted quite a few videos about things that I've envisioned that came to pass exactly like picture wise. And now obviously I don't have a picture of everything that happened, but um, you know, when I look back and I, I posted this video where in um, January, 2020, no, not in January, 2020, like at some point where it was COVID, I believe. And I posted this photo. I want to be in this place because this image captured my mind and in the image, there was this infinity pool overlooking the jungle with a deck on the right hand side. And lo and behold, like now four years later or what have you, unfortunately too long, but it doesn't matter. It's the exact same image. And I want you to look at that. Okay. It's a video that's called, uh, I believe it's called how to manifest with images. It's really incredible when you have this proof, when you set your intention and when, you know, you basically say, Hey, this is my intention. You say it to the universe, you declare it publicly. Remember, claim, declare, praise, thanks. Those are the steps that I originally taught you guys on how to bring forth your manifestation. So I wanna review them quickly, okay? Claim, it means know exactly what you want. Claim, okay? I gotta know what I want in order to get what I want. That, that is what claiming is. I see something I want and I mean like, this is what I want. Declare is to, to make a declaration somehow, to write it down, to um, have an image of it on your vision board, to, to declare it somehow that it is yours. It's not enough to just know that you want that. And then praise it. Praise it being like, my car, my new car is so wonderful. Pray, talk about it. Talk about it with gratitude, right? And so at the end, give thanks that it is done. It is done, right? And I think what happens, maybe a lot of us, we stay too long in this in this, after we say, this is what I want and it is done, we stay too long in this prayer, kind of wishing, kind of desiring stage. And the video that I've done um, a few days ago, I was talking about this and I said, do not mistake the delay your manifestation takes with, with you being in a waiting energy. A lot of people ask me to clarify this. So what does this mean, right? Do not be in a waiting, waiting energy because you're going to wait forever. Understand that once you transmit something, which is your intention, once you stay focused, you don't dilute your intention. You don't say, oh, you know, yeah, I want, uh, I don't know, a four bedroom home, but I guess a condo is okay as well, right? So do not change your mind on what you originally set your intention to. So when you are in that intention, and when you've declared it, just know for a fact, and you don't need a huge amount of faith, but just know that it is out there. And if you keep declaring it with images, with doing our challenge, with writing, with having an energetic group to support you, with being in the right state of mind, not talking to people who don't believe in these things, not, not publicly saying, oh, um, I'm, I'm going to get this and I'm going to leave you guys behind. So, so never tell people that you're looking to change your circumstances from the way things are right now, because even people that love you, you know, they might be afraid of that change. So as long as you do all these things, I guarantee you that if you don't dilute your manifestation, if you understand right now, it's not here today because I'm in the delay. 
but I'm not like waiting for it. I'm not like, where is it? I'm not checking my phone to see how many likes I got or if he texted me or if I got the job offer yet, or I'm not checking because I know I'll see it at the right time. I'm just, I'm just in that portion where, where I don't see that the universe is working, but the universe is actually arranging the circumstances and events to make this happen, right? It's the circumstances and events need to be orchestrated for us and they can only come to us based on if we open the door from, the, from our side, which means drop the resistance drop the resistance and what I loved seeing in in the challenge and in the 60 days you know because I have the Facebook group where people where people can post their success stories or you can send your success story to me and I'll post it anonymously but a lot of people are having success very early and other people they're not having success very early they're having success second time around third time around but seeing that it's possible for this other people who are doing the exact same work not from the general manifestation community in general that who knows like it's a small group and people kind of know each other and you know they're like oh it happened for you know Kathy so mine is incoming right so your waiting becomes just a delay in which you are you're very welcome I just uh, that was sort of my intro for the new year do not forget the four um four steps which is claim, know exactly what you want, declare, put it on your vision board, write about it, journal about it, put it in our challenge, praise it, say what you love about it, say, say it in the present tense, and then give thanks. And once you've done that, it's just like a radio station, right? You've transmitted, and now you're, expe- you're, not, you're not doing anything more. You've transmitted. You're saying, this is my intention. Now pay attention, because your intention has to match who you are. And if who you are So let's say with money, if who you are, you're feeling that your market value is 60,000 a year, but you declare that you're making $6 million a year, that's not likely to happen. Or it may happen 20 years from now when you slowly adjust your self-image to match it. So my approach to this is always a step-by-step approach. Okay, from 60, you go to 80, from 80, you go to 140, from 140, you go to 250, etc. You don't go from 40 to a million. Your mind's not going to be okay with this. And, you know, it's going to incur, it's going to incur a lot of frustration along the way, which will make you give up on the process. So that, that's sort of the difference in how I take a practical approach. I'm very practical about life, by the way. People who follow me know this. So um, I give also practical advice in my lives about, especially about dating and about how to handle things when they unfold. Um, I want to actually start with a comment that I got on one of my videos. And this person says, any advice on how to manifest when even finding one coin on the ground doesn't happen? I keep seeing one, 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 but nothing happens. Okay, so if you've been following my content, you know I don't tie myself to any signs of the world, right? So for me, this thing with 111, 222, readings, all of these things, I, I don't do. We only have one ritual in our group, and that is a new moon ritual. I actually only do it because it was passed on to me by my grandma. Every time there was a new moon, she said, make a wish. That was the only thing, and many of those wishes that I've made actually came true. And, and so... I do this ritual, but I, I combine it with doing it as a group, focused intention, wishing well for everyone and doing a day of fasting while we're doing that. And, you know, whether it has to do with the fact that it's new moon or not, that group intention, that energy, that meditation that we're doing all the same, one or more people doing it, two, sorry, two or more people doing it because you really just need two or more and everything will be done. And us projecting that energy back into the group, this is what's happening on a basis of fasting, on a basis of controlling our body, controlling our thoughts. So I just happen to do it for new moon just because, you know, it's, it's sort of like grounded in a 3D event, but it's not somehow a worshiping of the moon or anything like that. I will post the shower ritual again. Um, I posted a shower ritual that you should do with the new moon. With We'll all do it together, whoever's in my group or whoever wants to try it. And it's it sort of has to do with passing through the water and switching to the new person that you want to become. But I'll post that later. I already filmed it. I just have to narrate it. Um, and I'll post it just so you can see how you can do it in your own shower and what the instructions are. I think you should try it. You know, you should just humor me. 
just try it, humor me, and I think you're going to find that um, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to be part of a group of people doing the same thing and enjoying it. And, you know, then finding, um, like this person said, I can't find anything on the ground, but I keep seeing these signs. So if you're new to manifestation, if you, if you haven't had anything happen to you, if, you know, you heard about it and you want to manifest and you don't know how, what happens is the best way to start is to associate something that has already happened to you with the thought you already had in the past. That would be the best way for your mind to begin to adjust that thoughts create reality. So if you were raised in this materialistic worldview where, you know, we, we evolve from cells and animals and mammals and then there's us and there's nothing else, you die and you become dust. Um, it's very difficult for the mind to go from that to finding things on the ground and manifesting things. Like you need, your mind has to be okay with understanding the world differently before you can actually manifest. And the way the mind gets used to that is for sure things happen to you based on your thoughts because you manifest 24 seven, but you have to make that conscious association. If you want to consciously manifest, you have to make a conscious association between something that happened to you and the thoughts you were thinking or that may have supported that thing that happened to you. That's the easiest way to start before you kind of project $5 on the ground or whatever it is, proof that you want from the universe. You have proof, your whole life is proof that manifestation works. You just need to make the connections and the association. And eventually you're going to get to you know, having an image on your vision board and that coming through. And, you know, I, I talked about how little faith it takes, right? Because it still amazes me, you know, and I've been consciously manifesting for at least a few years now. And it still amazes me when it comes to pass and it's the exact image I had in my head or on a vision board. It's the exact words I wanted to hear. And I'm still like, wow, really? Really? But, you know, I'm, I really should be like, well, obviously, Obviously, that's, that's how it works. But I'm never, like, I'm always in awe of this thing. You know, that's how deep our programming is. Because if my parents and my teachers told me every single day that what I'm thinking about today will manifest tomorrow, I would be at a whole different level, right? Like, think about it. All of our programmings that we received, if people told you every single day that this is how it works, then you knew this is how it works. Like math, 2 plus 2 equals 4. All right. I feel like I'm rambling here, but this was, this was, I, f I felt it was important, especially for people who never manifested anything. Um, and if you guys don't know, we have a lot of lottery wins in our group. They haven't been like major lottery wins. Um, my most major one was about, I don't know, eighty eighty seven hundred dollars something like this. And since then I've manifested a lot of like hundreds of few hundred dollars, one was $1,200, maybe total in my life about $20,000, which is not bad because I have it, my lottery on automated. So I, it's, it only draws two tickets a week, which is like 10 bucks a week. Um, but um, it's really fun to win. And we have a lot of people in our group that are saying, oh, somebody just posted something like, oh, I'm, I won, I think it was like 35 euros, but I just want to say that because I've never won more than two, two euros in my whole life, you know? So you know, there is something that happens that takes you to the next level somehow. And I think it's, a, it's worthwhile to consider being part of uh, a group of people that are doing this together. All right, let's see what you guys are we're doing, what you're saying, and then we can take some questions and move on to um, other stuff. I can't say for the whole life, but I'm happy you're back. <laughs> Frederica, of course I'm back. I'll always be there for you guys. I told you guys this. And uh, I'm thinking of doing uh, maybe a podcast as well. So I don't ramble as much. So I have my ideas more organized and more grouped into specific things that you guys are focused on, whether it's money or love or work, fulfillment, purpose, your kids, changing the environment around you like I did, um, things like this. Um, all my lives are posted on YouTube after. Uh, Seren says, I started with the third round. I had a lot of blockages, but I feel I released after the two rounds. Yeah, so the most common testimonial that I have with my challenge is people saying um, things popped up that I didn't know I had this blockage. I, I didn't know. And now it's clear that I had it. And clearly that's why. So um, dreams are important. Paying attention to your intuition is important. All of this going in the inner, but not just when you meditate. 
right? Not just well, before you go to sleep, not just stay the kin to sleep. You got to be in this awareness all the time. You got to be like stop during the day and say, what am I doing right now? Why am I doing it? Why am I feeling this way? What triggered inside me to feel either happy or sad or, you know, and if you're feeling happy, great. What is it that triggered this in me? Because I want to do more of this. And if you're feeling sad, it's like you want to say, is this really what happened? Or is that my interpretation of events? You always have to come into this state of self-awareness to understand what is happening to you, you as the observer of your life. This helped me tremendously in my life to sort of disassociate from this person that has these thoughts and understand that if I'm observing these thoughts, then I'm not, I'm not the person thinking them, right? Because if I was the person thinking them, I couldn't also observe them. So that's the difference between mind, spirit, and of course, matter. Um, I want to manifest moving to a different country. How do I do it fast? Well, I didn't move to a different country yet, but you know, my manifestation was always, I, I don't want to spend the winter in Canada and especially the month of January. The month of January is brutal in Canada. And, and so I put it on my vision board and you guys know if you follow me, it's exactly what came to pass. And it wasn't a matter of money. So I'm, I'm here until February, but it wasn't a matter of money. I could afford to do this much sooner. But it was a matter of, you know, my child had school. There has to be special arrangements. Um, I wouldn't travel alone without a man. I was single at the time. And, you know, like I wouldn't travel with a boyfriend. Um, it would have to be like a spouse, like a fiancé or a husband. So many things had to come together to make this happen for me. And other than money. And, you know, looking back, I wasn't thinking oh, I want to spend, you know, January, February outside of Canada in a warm climate, in a beautiful place. Um, but then I also need to, to, in order to do this, I need to do this and this and that and that. And, you know, because once you start thinking about the how, it's not going to happen. So I just put it out there. I'm like, I'm setting the intention. This is what I want to wake up. I want to wake up in a place that's very private, very secluded and a beautiful home and swim every morning. And for the last week that's exactly what I've been doing you know while also doing my work if you guys don't know I also have a 3d business um, you know I got to take care of you guys which I really I enjoy that but there's no reason why I need to do that from minus 20 degrees Celsius you know what I mean so once I just made this intention and this decision everything in my life kind of came together to support that to make that happen now I've done all the practices that I teach you guys to do of course along the way so um, if you want to manifest moving to a different country fast, you have to understand that fast has to do with you and your inner you and your blockages and not to the technique. The technique is you follow the same techniques as everybody who's been manifesting. Whether it takes 10 days or 10 years, that, that one's on you. One's on you, it's on your awareness, it's on your limiting beliefs. So, so for example, if I had this idea that I wanna spend January's you know, in, in a warm climate, but I also had the idea that I can't, I can't travel without a fiance or husband. And I also had this idea that men are not keen to commit. That doesn't, that's not going to allow for a fast manifestation, right? Because I got to change my mind about a few of those things in order to make this happen. So try to see what blockages you have around moving to another country. Like what is it that you also associate with this move? Maybe there's a cost that you don't feel you can pay. Maybe there's a fear of a language barrier. Maybe there's a fear of the unknown. Maybe because you got to drop a lot of the things around it in order to make this happen. Let's see. Uh, what else do we have here? I missed a lot. Give me one second, guys. Mm. I've changed my, my life in three months. Everything is possible. Yeah. Yeah. Once you remove the blocks, it happens fast. Uh, Happy New Year. No one can dispute collective energy. Otherwise, why does religion even pray? Of course, no one can dispute collective energy. This is why the world is going in the same direction, right? Isn't it? Once you, once you give people the messages that um, the economy sucks, politics sucks, the world is coming to an end, 
um, young people can't afford homes, it's a hookup culture. Once you give people like in the collective energy enough of these messages, that's where it's going. Because the collective has power, whether you pray for good or you give messages, you instill messages of not good. It doesn't, it's neutral. It just going, you, if you don't like where the collective is going, you gotta swim against it every day. Every day in awareness, every day you see the news, you're like, this is not my reality. It has nothing to do with me. What's happening here, I'm going to help as much as I can. I'm going to do what I can, if I can do anything. And afterwards, I'm going to move my focus from what's happening here. I'm not going to keep my focus every single day on these bad things that are happening in the world, these bad things that are happening with my friends in their dating life. It doesn't have to be my reality. In fact, it's not my reality. So you have to do this work every single day. Yeah. Yeah, it depends what kind of life you want to have. I don't mind doing this work. I don't mind training my awareness because I love the experiences that I'm having right now in my life. And I love the experiences that I can give other people. And when I teach other people, when I get success stories, you don't understand. I'm actually as happy as it's happening to me. And I think that contributes to what can happen to me because I'm like, my God, this is somebody who's doing the work with me who has this like, you know, it's, it's real inside of me, this feeling of excitement. And I think that multiplies my own, um, my own manifestations. Yeah. When did you start your journey with spirituality and manifestation? So very, very consciously a few years ago, maybe four or five years ago. But I, um, I started by making this association that when I was a child, I was always doing it. I was able to affect the weather. I was able to, I, I, I used to be a big liar when I was a kid. I would lie about all the white lies ever. And um, they would all come true. And I used to think that God was making my lies come true so that I'm not a liar. You know what I mean? Because being a liar was, you know, associated with sin. And so what I didn't realize is that as I was saying those things, I was making them happen. So I was, I, then I realized I was always inclined towards this. And I started to tell myself the way I was doing it then, I can do it now, right? I just now have baggage. I have baggage I have to shed. It's not even like that I have to learn so much more. It's really that I have to shed whatever happened to me between the time I was able to do this naturally and now. And that's where the work is, right? All the triggers, all, all the past, all the other people's energy that's around you. And remember, anyone who has ever touched you, anyone that you form any kind of emotional connection to, whether it's love or hate, right? When you hate your boss, you have an energetic cord to your boss, you know? Um, all, all of this stuff, it's, it's a process of shedding baggage that's what baggage is really it's not like social baggage it's like the baggage you carry in your energetic field let's see how do i script without figuring out writing the how i have i actually have a video on scripting if you scroll down i don't know maybe 20 30 videos and it's called how to script um, but you, you're never scripting about the how, right? Try scripting in the third person, Amanda, about Amanda's day, let's say what's now, January 8, 2024. Put the date at the top, January 8, 2025, and tell me about Amanda without telling me the how. Tell me what's Amanda doing January 8, 2025 in, in your scripting. Amanda woke up blah, 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 blah. What did she do the next thing? I actually did this with um, a day in the life from last winter. I did it for this winter. And it came, like, I can't even, you know, some of the stories I can't even say because they're just too ridiculous. And, you know, I don't want to be seen like, it's embarrassing, right? But the exact same things that I wrote about. But one is like, you know, I always wanted to start my day by going for a swim, which is like impossible in Canada, right? So... Um, you know, I scripted exactly that, you know, that Mona would wake up and eat this and her lovely spouse would make her coffee when I was single. And, you know, like uh, she'd wake up with a kiss and she'd go for a swim before starting her day. And <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't even like, it's just, I'm in so much gratitude, but you see, I'm also in awe. I'm in awe because even as I was, it doesn't take a lot of faith. It's not like I knew 100% this is going to happen to me by next January, 100%. It takes very little faith, remember that. 
you just have to insist. You have to insist and stay in that type of energy. This is the hardest part. Not falling back into the energy of the world, I feel this is the hardest part. And it's so simple, but it's not easy. This is my motto. Because if I remember it's not easy, then I'm going to work harder. Then I'm going to stay in more awareness. Then I'm going to be like, yeah, it's not easy not to be mad at this person right now, but I'm going to do it. Why? For my future. Because I don't want my reality associated with anything that this angerness can trigger in the future. And it's not easy, right? Because it's so much easier to explode. It's so much easier. Um, yeah, let's, let's start with that kind of scripting. Let's see what we have here. Uh, oh, my live, it's always one hour from 12 to 1 Eastern Standard Time. Here's not 12, it's like 1130. Um, if I script about how my birthday will go, is this focusing on the how? No, you're scripting about something that will happen a day in your future, but you have to remember it might not happen for your birthday. The timing is not really up to us because the timing doesn't, of the universe doesn't work in calendar days the way we say it. And the only way to associate it with a certain timing is if you imagine summer in the summer, with, like with the natural you know, elements of nature, the way, you know, the, the timing is the calendar. It's not even real, right? Like, it's not like the calendar existed. The day and night exists and, you know, the moon phases exist. But the way we count days is not like, why, why doesn't the year have 400 days? Or, you know, some people say it has 320 days. And um, so let go of the timing. I think you'll be surprised because at first you'll manifest a lot of the smaller steps. And when they come, you're going to gain more and more confidence that this is how it works. And that's where you need to get. That's why I tell you guys, start small. That's where you need to get. Let's see. I even know I have a collected block with SP hookup culture. They only want uh, that one thing. Yeah, I, I had the block of, you guys know if you've been following me, um, the block of, you know, because I was divorced and I'm getting remarried now. Um, I, when I was dating, after I was divorced, I was like, okay, I'm dating other divorced people and guys who are successful and who have gone to a divorce are not ready to commit, you know, or willing that much to commit. This was a limiting belief I was just placing on myself. Um, and when I let go of it, and when I decided that they all want to get married, and then marriage is good for them and it's good for their social status, they all wanted to commit and get married. It's, it's just a belief. Remember, guys, with love is easy because you're not looking for large groups of men who will match your criteria. You're only looking for one, one man, right? You don't need the majority of men to behave a certain way or to have a common goal. You just need to believe that for you and stay, stay in the feeling. Don't have that list. I told you guys, I tried the list. It was disaster, right? Because you'll meet your list like I did. And then uh, you'll realize uh, you didn't put everything on the list. And what's missing from the list is actually important. At this point, it's going to be very disappointing letting go of this man you created with your list. Or you'll manifest them for your friend like it happened to somebody in our group. Guys, all you got to stay focused on when you're manifesting love and marriage is how you feel every day with this one man. And it's best if you don't focus on a specific man. Um, let's see. Um, guys, if you miss my live, I, it's all posted on uh, YouTube after. But of course, during the live, you can ask questions. Um, let's see. No, I start at 12 Eastern Standard Time, not, not 1300 hours. It worked for me for Anno Mundi Declaration. Of course it did. And you see, you're still surprised. It worked for a few people. Um, oh, yeah, it worked for Lisa, too. What do you think happens? Need to work. Huh? OK. Yes, we made a declaration in our group with Anno Mundi, and it's worked for quite a few people. If you guys don't know what that is, that is um, we have the calendar year, which is the Gregorian calendar, and then the Anno Mundi is referred to the counting of the years from the time the world was created from a religious perspective. 
And so Ana Mundi is, um, does anybody remember? It's 75, 7532, what year are we in? Does anybody remember? Something like that. And so the declaration you, you made, we made in a group, is that by you know, December and the year 7532, let's say, um, this, this particular thing is going to happen. And I said, just humor me, let's do a declaration at Anno Mundi, see what happens. It happened for a few people. <laughs> I loved it. Mine didn't happen yet. Sorry, I don't know what to do with this ice. I have to swallow it now. I know it's making noise. I'm in a much better mood, guys. I'm in a much better mood in the sun. Do you practice OBE? What is that short for? Generally, guys, my view of the world is this. God, okay, ultimate creator. The technology that he left for us, which he called the universe, formless substance. This, this matter that we can affect, this invisible matter that we can affect with our thoughts that creates reality, which is neutral. It doesn't have to do with good or bad. Um, and then there is us. And this formless substance can be accessed from both sides. For obviously, God can access it and make something happen for you, or you can access it and make something happen for yourself. God will not go against your free will. Just the way the game is designed or just the way he wants it, it doesn't really matter. You have the free will to choose good or bad for yourself and unfortunately for everyone else involved in your life. And this makes sense with the structure of the world where people ask, how come God allows for all this evil? And it's, it's people who access the form of substance from our end and use it for whatever it is they want. And make no mistake, there's quite a few people in this world that know exactly how to use it. God will not interfere. Hi, currently going through a breakup. Any words to make me feel better? Yes, Karina, some words to make you feel better is this is the year for you to be the main character. And this is the year to sit with yourself. Don't blame him, okay? Don't even, don't even blame him. Just sit with yourself and ask yourself one question. Write it down. What error in my thinking has brought me to this day in my life? Because if you're very honest with this question, what you'll realize is that you've tolerated a lot of small steps along the way that you didn't, that your higher self and your feminine intuition told you not to. You know how your higher self speaks to you? By your feelings. So when he doesn't contact you for a day, for two days, or he doesn't open the car door, or you know, he asks you to pay 50-50 for dinner, and you go ahead because you think this is what society wants. When he spends time with his friends who are girls without you, and it feels bad, but you accept because this is what society tells you it's okay. All of those steps will, will lead you to this day. Compromise is heartbreak postponed. If you never make a compromise, you will never be heartbroken. And I think, you know, never expect words such as men suck. And, you know, because the moment you start saying that they're all into hookups, they only want one thing. The moment you say that, your next one is going to be the same. And the only way to change all of this is for you to take responsibility for what's happening to you today. What error in my thinking has gotten me? What have I accepted that I shouldn't have that has gotten me to this point? Compromise you can make is like, you know, he wants to eat pizza and you want to eat Chinese food and you're going to eat pizza to please him. That's okay. Toilet seat, he always leaves it up. It's so annoying. That's okay. Compromise is not something that makes you feel bad inside. Never, ever, ever, ever. You can say when something is not, you know, don't, don't expect men to read your mind and to know maybe exactly what to do. You can say, you know, my expectation is this. If you can't meet it, it's okay. You're the main character. 2024 is the perfect time to start fresh.
I hope you're going to feel better and I hope you're going to do that exercise. Um, yeah, in the first email you sent me, Lisa, you, I remember that, this was a few months ago, you said your SP only wanted one thing. Well, whatever happened to your SP? You're gonna spend the holiday with him and stuff. I tell you guys, don't be, don't be focused on SPs. Don't be, forget about their existence. When you focus on you, they always come back. A lot of the times you don't want them anymore. I had a queen in our group a few months ago. She specifically was manifesting her SP. After two months, because she had met like a wonderful, like someone, the SP calls her and she didn't know whose number it was. She's like, who's this? And she picks up the phone and it was her SP. And, but she was a, this new guy. And she was like, shit, I was like now panicking because I didn't know how to get rid of him because, you know, I didn't want this new guy who is perfect to know that I have another guy calling me. He was right next to me. (laughs) Allow for the possibility that the person you will be two, three months from now will want different things and better things for you. Okay? Allow for that possibility that you will grow and evolve and it just, it can't be this loop forever where you're in love. Listen, I was in love with a guy at 14. I was very in love with him. I still remember that feeling. And in that feeling, I never thought I could love somebody else again. You know? And then when I did, the second time, I'm like, oh, maybe this can happen uh, more than once. Maybe, you know, even if I lose this, it's not going to be the end of the end of the end. Let's see. Um... Are you going to create level two for the challenge? Yeah, I'm thinking about it. I want to do a podcast first because the whole um, idea of my work was to help people, right? I've done very well in my 3D business. And I just, you know, once I figured out, like I never understand how these coaches get online and they don't have, they're like, oh yeah, I made so much money. I don't know, talking about manifestation. I was like, if I, if I don't have my life in order in all aspects, like work, money, love life, my body, how can I get on a platform and teach people how to do it, you know? And then I, I watch these people and they're like, yeah, yeah, I made, you know, I don't know, a million dollars and, you know, they still like, they don't have their body in order, they don't have their life, life, love life in order. I, I, I don't know, because I don't want to talk bad about other people, but I'm saying they really have to have what you want, not by selling you something. It, it, anyway, I, let's not go there. So am I going to create a level two for the challenge? Yes, only because I feel like the people who have worked with me for months now, since I put this out in May, um, are ready for a second challenge. But I want to do the podcast sort of for for the world, for everybody who wants to learn and, you know, put it on Spotify or something and group it by categories. Um, I think I think that would be um, beneficial. Um, Let's see. How do I handle worry that the person you broke up with will be better for his new girlfriend? He will be. It has nothing to do with your life. If See, the thing is, I am a better woman now than I was to my first husband. The, the idea is we're supposed to, the people who grow in this life, we're supposed to grow and learn from every experience. And I know 100% that my fiance, who also was married before, is better to me than he was in his first marriage. And I think that just happens to people who grow. It's, it's a normal thing that happens to people who progress through life, people who don't devolve. Um, you, you can't worry about that. I know it's, it's a terrible thing to stay in this resentment that you made a man better and you were just a lesson for him. And now he's going to take that lesson and do it better. But you are also better, right? You are also better due to this experience. You need to forget about him. You need to completely break with that girl that you were when you were with him. Because the new girl that you are has to be different than the person who accepted whatever it is he gave you and then he moved on to somebody else. You have to be better. Don't worry. He's, he, if he's a normal, growing man, he will be better for the next person. Don't think about this. Just think, you know, in, in the human experience, this is normal. Forgive that. Allow for that. And attract a man who knows how to be better for you because he's gone through other experiences. Do not worry about that. 
do, you need to make yourself the main character. Stop thinking. I've contributed, I'm sure, to the lives of many people that I'm not going to get a return from. You know, I've even like, this doesn't apply just with love, even work related. I know for a fact, I've, there's at least 13, 14 people who got their jobs only because of my recommendation in, in the corporate world. I've never had any return from those people. But my return came, it's just from different sources. This is how you have to think about it. You've contributed to his life, this is fine. Just know that that contribution is coming back to you somehow. You have to. Okay, queen. Lisa, you blocked him, finally. Oh. Gosh, it's time for new Lisa. Just like you changed your country, it's time to change your man. What can I do about jealous female friend that I have to be around for a while? Don't tell them anything about your life. Don't tell them. Tell them you're doing, you're not doing good or you're not, you know what, I don't even want to talk about it because then I get back into this negative feeling. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, he's, he's okay, but I, I don't really like, you know, minimize all of your successes. If you have to be, I don't know why you have to be around. I'm assuming maybe it's your roommate or something and work to relieve yourself of that social situation as soon as possible. Lisa, this is good. You're not giving access. Listen, when he comes back, if he does, if he doesn't, that's fine. You, you guys know, right? That's what I did with, I didn't block him because I don't block anybody because I'm always worried if somebody became obsessive or something. So I'd rather know if they text me than if they don't, right? So I, I simply don't respond. So um, my, my current fiance, when we were broken up for four months, he did send me a long message and stuff and I didn't reply. And then he showed up at my door with a totally different proposition another two months later. Um, but you could tell something very profound had changed, very life realization. But I tell you guys, and I told you then, my focus was not on manifesting him back. My focus on, was on um, a dream woman and all men, marriage is good for men, and all men want to get married, and all men love to provide, and all men, you know, and from this spinning of this energy, I actually manifested another man who was pretty good. Um, we're dating for two months, but then my SP came back, and you know, I just, obviously, I was still in love with him, um, and now we're engaged, um, we're getting married in July, um, but when you focus on your own energetic spin, you will, you have to completely drop the SP, right? So I'm not, none of it is manifesting him. It's all like, I'm a dream woman. Everybody wants to marry me. I am always growing. I'm contributing to people. I love to add value to people, to men in my life, to a husband, to a, you know, it's all from that perspective. And then just be open to what comes. If he comes, Lisa, and he knocks on your door with a different proposition, you go for it. You're not going to respond to, oh, I miss you. Do you want to hook up? Oh, Queens, it's 2024. This is the year of us. We're the main characters. Queen, I was trying to manifest a relationship for a year now. I tried everything and I let it go. See, maybe we can talk together just to see where, where the blockage is. Um, how do you feel about manifesting with mirror work? I have done it but I just don't like to do spell-like work. What I have done with the mirror is um, just positive messages to the person that's in the mirror. So the person that's in the mirror, you disassociate from, from that person and then you tell her whatever it is about her that you wanna be true about you. So you are loved, you're loving, you, you're wonderful. Look at your beautiful eyes. Look at, oh my God, everybody. No wonder everybody's turning their head to look at you. No wonder everyone, like look at your, the whole aura that you have. You're so smart, you're so desired, right? So you're talking to this person, disassociating from this person. That's the only mirror work, not spell-like work, not to bring somebody back, not to get money from the other side of the mirror, none of this. Just, just positive about you. It works, it really does. And the other thing that works that I got from a neuroscientist is 
when you wake up in the morning, brush your teeth with the opposite hand. Try to do that for like a week or two weeks. You will see things will change in your day for some reason, right? Because your brain all of a sudden has to, like, it breaks a loop. It breaks the loop of your everyday routine. Like, it's like, what's happening right now, right? It's, it's interesting how the mind works. So you got to break all loops if you want a, a different life. And the problem is we don't even know the loops that you're in. We don't know the loops. We don't, we don't realize we're on certain loops. Let's see. How do you know we are in love or how did you know? Okay, so it depends how old you are. When I was 14, I knew in a different way. But at my age, I, I knew I was in love because this person made me feel at peace and made me feel safe, provided for. And, and in seeing all this and in releasing the masculine energy that the majority of women have to have, if you're an adult, if you're living on your own, if you're supporting yourself, if you're supporting maybe your children as well, um, you have a lot of masculine energy. And when a man comes into your life that allows you with his behavior to step out of that energy and you trust him and you feel at peace and you feel safe and you feel provided for and you feel loved and you feel his consistency, his consistency in doing that, the love will come extremely quickly because you will realize like the real you will come to the surface. We, I don't know if you guys realize we're, we're no longer allowed to be in our feminine energy and in, in our feminine energy in our day-to-day -day life. I don't know if you guys feel that or if you contemplate on that or if you contemplate that in your interaction with a man, you're probably behaving like a man also. And you're wondering why you're putting them off or why they're not, even if they say they want all this independent thought and independent women, it, it's not what vibes with them, you know, because men follow their instincts a lot more than we do. We have better instincts, but we no longer follow them. This is what society trained us to do, to no longer follow our feminine energy. This is why what's happening to women is happening. We're heartbroken. We're socially broken. We're broke financially. We're like, this, this is why it's happening. Because our creative energy doesn't stand in, in our power to be systematic about a nine to five job and to you know, be all encompassing, controlling every situation. That's not where our creative power lies. We can do that, but that's sort of a downgrade from our collective, from our innate power. Um, let's see. How should we add our daily love line if we are married and we want our SP to be happier? Um, every day I, so you're married, okay? You're, you're doing the challenge, I know. So what you want to do is for your relationship column, you're not, you know, wanting a man, but you want the same man. My husband is so grateful for me every single day. My husband, I wake up with kisses every single day in my husband's arms. And as you're writing this, you're also imagining it in your head, right? I wake up to the smell of pancakes. I feel so appreciated. My husband always gives me these little gifts. Every day I am provided for and I'm protected by my husband. I'm so happy. We are so happily married. We are like marriage is the way to go. It's the way to be. I'm so lucky in the partnership. I'm so lucky to wake up every day feeling lucky that I'm married. That's, that's where your mind would stay. Um, let's see. What do, I, what do I do is affirm positive things in front of the mirror and appreciate my image? Exactly. Exactly. I've done that. It's, it's, um, it, it's, it works 100%. Um, Carla, things are not changing for you. You had initially a lot of changes. You must be stuck on, on a certain things. I know you're manifesting marriage, right? Is, is that what's going on? You, you're, not, you're not married yet, but you said you met, you met a good man. What happened? The wizard says when I was working, I was depressed. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not that we don't want to work. We want to work under the conditions that we want to see. like I love working okay here my 3d business I love helping people I have the other but I don't 
what takes away from our feminine energy is having to produce a certain income to support ourselves. This is the real problem, right? It's not, I couldn't sit on the couch watching, I don't even watch TV. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you have to do whatever your energy is best suited for as a woman. And unfortunately, what we have to do is to earn an income to support ourselves, which no woman, you know, up to 70 years ago, 70 years ago had to do. No woman in the history of women, except, you know, maybe they were widowed from the war, who knows, right? But 90% of the women didn't have to do that, or 95% of the women. So, you know, when something feels bad, guys, go with how it feels. Go with how it feels. I know society tells you be liberated, but go with how it feels. That's how you know if it's the truth or not. The truth, you always feel it. So if society tells you, oh, you should, you know, um, have sex with men after two dates or three dates, that's what's expected. You know, he buys you three dinners. I don't even want to eat. You know what I mean? I'm not even in love with food. Really, like, I'm providing him my company. And then you have to sleep with him. Like, dude, just be in that relaxed energy. Be like, do I feel like doing this right now? Am I 100% sure he's going to call me tomorrow? Am I, do I, can I do this with no expectations? If it's just like, or do I expect that he's going to ask me out again? If you expect that he's going to ask you out again, do I know him well enough to know that his consistency has been tested? Think. You're the main character this year. Decide that now. Decide that now. Oh, and, and, and if he doesn't like that, he likes to move on. Okay, well, I guess you just spend on three dates. I guess you did give him some of your time, but do you really need his physical energy polluting your system? Ah, so my radical ideas here are going to get me in trouble. Um... The law of detachment. How do you have less resistance? First of all, you have to feel the resistance. You, you feel your resistance through your awareness. Things you're resisting bring up triggers. Every time you are triggered, every time you don't feel at peace, that's resistance. Let's see? Are you good here? Um, Carla, I want you to script about um, what is it? Am I on my highest life path? If things are not working for you, but you're doing the work, okay, first of all, understand that you're not going to increase. Don't become obsessed with the work, okay? That, that's why I designed this challenge. You do it in the morning, okay? You put it aside for the rest of the day. Don't forget to wish it for other people as well. This is a key element of, of um, our group energy, right? To be as excited for everybody else as you are for yourself. Don't become obsessed. And just during the day, just come in your awareness and be like, okay, if I don't have clients, am I really like, and I feel like I'm here, able and ready to help people. And I don't know what business you're in, if you're in helping or offering a different service. Is this, am I best suited in this thing? So what happens to us a lot of the time is we associate earning money with um, doing something we don't want to do, right? Because this is, this is how we're schooled. We're schooled like this is the professions you have to go into if you want to make money or, or what have you. See if you have any of these ideas around money. Like if right now I'm not doing something I hate, I'm doing something I love, am I allowed to make money for it, right? Carla, so when you're doing your business, and you don't have clients, but you love doing the work that you're doing, is it because secretly you think that in order to earn an income, you have to sacrifice that nine to five time in your life? Is, is this the, block, the blockage? And for a lot of people, this is the blockage. It's like something in us tells us, you know, artists don't make money. Um, people who do what they like all day long don't make money. Is spiritual people are not allowed to make money, right? Like people won't mind paying $200 to go to a rapper's concert. But if somebody goes to listen to, I don't know, a preacher and donates $200, you're like, oh my God, this guy's making too much money, right? That's the idea. Idea is like, he's not allowed to earn. So if you're a spiritual person or if you're doing that kind of work, when you're helping people, are you, do you think you're allowed 
to earn money. Is it, you're the only one who has to give yourself permission, by the way. Let's see. I'm glad you guys are learning certain things. I want, I want you guys to be so successful, you know, and the stories, you don't understand that when you send me a story, if you don't want to post it publicly on our Facebook group, people know your name, just send it to me. I just screenshot it and I post it anonymously. Some people do that. You are contributing to the other queens by showing them what is possible. You haven't seen your videos you know, I, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't gotten a lot of engagement that's in my videos. And, you know, luckily I don't rely on this as my source of income or, or anything. So I'm doing it really out of... I, but I don't know why... Because I, I know my videos are very educational. And I don't know why this algorithm wouldn't promote it. But, you know, these algorithms aren't being there to help people, you know. They're being there to, um, you know, promote whatever gets the most amount of entertainment, I guess. This, this work is not easy. Uh, how do you find your passion if you have a number of creative skills? Depends how old you are. Because if you're older, you would know what you gravitated more towards. If you're like 20, I think you have to try all of them. But um, again, check that money earning thing. Is it, do you think you're allowed to make money with, uh, with your passion? Or do you think doing your passion means foregoing the income? Key, key major limiting beliefs. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything because I make some notes for you guys here. Um, I wanted to say that very often we desire or intend one thing and we expect another. That's another reason why manifestation doesn't happen. Okay, listen to that again. We desire one thing, but we expect another. So even though I might intend this, I'm thinking this is a dream and I put it out there, but I expect that tomorrow I still have to go to work. My husband will still be an ass to me. Uh, my kids are going to be disrespectful. I still expect the same day as yesterday. So if you desire and intend something, but then you wake up every day expecting more of yesterday, pay attention. Pay attention to what you're expecting. This is why I created this challenge. And, you know, like log on the first thing in the morning and make your declarations. Make your declaration and then wish it on the other people exactly as described. In wishing it, I, I really think there's an element to it. When you want it for others, when you want it, even if it didn't happen for you, be happy that it happened for another. You know, somehow you created that. And then something that somebody else wishes will happen on you. Some other good thing will happen on you. Believe me, it's never from the same people. It doesn't, it, doesn't mean, it doesn't mean anything. Don't expect good to come from the people that you do good to. This life was so good. I learned a lot. Um, I'll, put it, I'll put it on YouTube um, as soon as, as, soon as the, uh, TikTok has to download it or make it accessible. It takes them a couple of hours. I'm going surfing today in the Pacific. This is my first time in the Pacific Ocean. I've only done Atlantic so far, and I don't think I'll go back to the Atlantic. It's Pacific, it's like 10 degrees warmer. I didn't know that. When your husband, like my fiance, I guess, came back, he, were you ready for marriage or it took time? So we dated for nine months um, initially, and then um, I, I didn't like that he had... He, he was divorced for only three years, so I was divorced for longer than that. So he had all this, like, female friends. And I knew he was being sexually exclusive with me. That's not the point. And he did treat me like a princess, so that wasn't a problem either. The problem was I wasn't comfortable thinking that, I'm, A, I'm not dating someone for marriage. And if I'm dating someone for marriage, I wouldn't be comfortable with my husband, you know, buying birthday gifts for single women, going, like going for lunches with them. Like, I wouldn't be comfortable with that. But, I, but then I didn't want to ask that of him either because I was like, he is where he is in his life and he should have whatever it is he wants in his life. But it's just not for me. So you got to be very strong in that conviction. So I let go of a good man. I'm a man who, like, contacted me every day, sent me flowers before dates, took me out three times a week. You know, all, all of those things was kind, was, you know, but I just could not stand its idea that he was also kind to other women. 
And, you know, I don't really care what society thinks about this. Maybe they think I'm insecure or this is completely acceptable. Because in following your intuition, you have to be happy every day and at peace with yourself. And I wouldn't be at peace knowing my husband is out with, you know. So anyways, I, I basically disconnected from the relationship. I told him why. And, you know, after two months, he, like, we didn't communicate. I said, this is fine. Um, but it's not for me. And, and so after two months, he sent me a text saying, but I had moved on, right? Like I had purposely moved on because I had made that decision. Obviously, it took me a while in my own mind to make that decision. And I realized I, I didn't pose the question because I never met and I haven't dated a lot and I haven't met like my ex-husband didn't have any female friends, you know, a couple of guys I dated, they didn't have any female friends. And the next time I went on dating market, my first question is, do you have female friends? You know, because for me, I realized it's a huge deal. So um, the person that I met after him said, uh, no, it uh, can't work. What do you mean? Like, I'm a grown man. I can, you know, so I was like, yes, check, you know, check from the list. So after two months, my SP came back. And um, what happened is um, he sent me a message saying he misses me and he still loves me. I didn't reply because love or missing wasn't the problem, right? The problem was under that structure, I wouldn't be happy long term. And, and so, you know, after two more months, uh, he showed up at my door and with a different proposition. And he said he thought about what I said. And initially, like he doesn't care about these girls, he said. But initially, he didn't want to say that because... Um, he didn't want, you know, this to be a control thing, like I control him. But then he realized I didn't. I let him have whatever it is he wanted. And he realized that those friendships don't serve him. They have no meaning in his life. And what he wants is a life with me and my family and, you know, our families together. And so, you know, under this new structure, we started to date in January of last year. And in July, he proposed. It was a very different dynamic because I felt a lot safer not having all these other people around. He really disconnected from all, all of them. Like his phone was on the counter all the time. All messages pop up. There was never any messages from any other people. There's only messages from his guy friends. And he, he said like the first few months, I was like, you know, are you, you know, happier in this life? Are you sure? Are you like, I wanted to make sure things are working for him. And he goes like, oh my God, I'm so happy, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, I think when you follow your intuition, you have to be very brave because you might have to let go of things that you, you find valuable, but they don't vibe with you. Like he was a valuable man, right? High income, treating me like a princess. But if that thing doesn't align, you know, every day and you don't say it in your heart, it's going to create so much resentment. So no, you know, I wasn't ready for marriage right away because I wanted to make sure this behavior was consistent, that he was focused just on us. And um, yeah, but in, in July, you know, from January to July when he proposed, I knew. And it's been like wonderful ever since. And uh, we're getting married um, this, this coming July. So um, I just want you guys to take from the story the fact that you should never compromise on what feels good or bad inside of you in terms of a man's behavior. Be brave and tell him. And as you're respecting yourself, he may say, no, this isn't for me. Or he may say, yeah. You know, I want to make her happy. I never thought of it that way. A lot of them, they don't think of it that way, even if they love you, because you make this normal behavior. You make him not texting you normal behavior, right? So they don't even think, you know, how, my, how they make you feel all of the time. You know, I don't believe in this thing. All men know exactly what it, what it is. Do they? Just tell them. And if they do it again, then you know they, they're doing it on purpose. But if they say, oh, my God, babe, I didn't realize I would never do this again, you know, if it really bothers you. So let's see. Carla, let's let's talk in private. I'm not I'm not sure why you started the year crying and not feeling good. I want to I want you to send me a little note and I will reply to you. Okay. Because I know at some point you're, you're happy. So I don't, I'm not really sure what happened. I can't address it on, on the live. I don't know whether to manifest my ex improving or getting someone new. You should manifest you being happy every day with the man that you're with. And you should picture scenes in which that imply that you're happy. Whatever those scenes mean to you. For me, I did the pancake scene, you know, like I would want a man 
He wakes up before me, makes me pancakes, I smell coffee, he wakes me up with a kiss. I had this in my mind even when I was single. And that's sort of his routine like today. Um, he went for a run here, if you can believe it, through these mountains. What are those monkeys? Um, and then, you know, when I woke up, coffee was ready and yeah. We can all have this. I, I was single as well. I, I know, I know the wrong beliefs that I had, you know? And I was a single mom and, you know? Luckily, I always had good ideas about money. So I was, I never had that worry. But in my heart, I never thought I could meet somebody. There were times when I thought guys were not going to commit again. They don't, they're not going to do this and this and that. All this wrong thinking that society puts on us. And then I was like, wait a second. This is just somebody else's ideas. It's somebody else's thoughts. They're being imposed on me. Why does my life have to follow the script? It doesn't have to at all. It really doesn't have to. I can decide differently for myself. And I want you guys to know you can decide differently for yourself as well. And I'm going to take this last one. I've had an opposite situation. My ex had a lot of female friends, and I didn't care about the fact in the end after the breakup, it turned out it should have been a problem for me. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> no female friends, guys. Respect yourself, okay? Respect yourself. If he's investing in you the way he's supposed to invest in you, he's not investing in other women. He's not investing his time, energy, especially money. They're not on his mind, etc. And dare to believe that there's one guy for whom you're going to be the only one. Dare to believe that about yourself. Do the mirror thing. Okay? Do, do the mirror thing. Don't... Okay, we're, we're past the time. Let's put our hands together for the I am a winner. I'm going to post this live and then I want to come back again later this week, but I can't promise one. If I don't come back, it will be next Monday at the same time. Put your hands together for our first I am the winner of the year. Say it with intention. I do the 369 tapping. It takes 30 seconds and then we end the live. Don't go to the next video. Just sit in this energy for at least two minutes. Close your eyes, okay? So, one breath. I am a winner. 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 I am a winner.